Well, uh, happy Sabbath, and uh, it's good once again to uh, have this late night uh, presentation. This is uh, Samuel Bafos with the uh, Gospel Sound as Rekindling Reformation Ministry. And uh, I'm glad that uh, we are in the Sabbath of the Lord, and he has enabled us to have such a day so that uh, we may be able to uh, learn together. And uh, we are continuing with our series on uh, need. Uh, for Sabbath reform. And so I'll pray and then now we can continue from uh, where we left uh, in the last presentation. Thank you, Heavenly Father, once again for this day that you have given unto us that we may rejoice in thee. I do pray that uh, you may, Lord, hear our prayers and uh, give us that uh, understanding, healing, and restoration that we need for such a time as this. Lord, forgive me my sins and iniquities and cleanse me and uh, use me as thy vessel. And Lord, let, let me stray away from thy righteousness. And above all, bless your children who shall be hearing this message. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. And so, uh, as I said that, uh, I'm glad that the Lord has given us uh, another opportunity that uh, we may be able to uh, share in his word. Uh, this is uh, the series I need for Sabbath reform. And uh, I pray that uh, the Lord will continue blessing us. The Lord will continue blessing us as uh, we share in this material. Um, we looked at some of the things that uh, the Lord is guiding us to do. If you missed the first part of it, then uh, you can uh, go back and rewatch it. And so today I'll be looking at uh, what are some of the things that are connected to the ministry that uh, we can do on uh, the Sabbath day. How did Christ, when he was on this earth work, how did he walk? Because we are told in the book of 1 John chapter 2, verse 6, that uh, whoever says he abides in him, must walk as even he walked. And so we know that the Lord is able to give us the strength to walk in the ways that his son walked. And uh, there is nothing we may ask of the Lord that he is not able to do for us. And so we can ask in faith and he will be able to do what uh, he has promised that uh, he will enable us to do. And... Um, just without going into much stories, what are these things that uh, uh, we can be able to do on the Sabbath? That, that has been uh, the, the question. What are the things that uh, we can uh, do on the Sabbath? In the Council on Sabbath School Work, Council on Sabbath School Work, we are told that um, teachers and workers in every department of the Sabbath School Work I address you in the fear of God and tell you that unless you have a living connection with God and are often before him in earnest prayer, you will not be able to do your work with heavenly wisdom and uh, win souls for Christ. The worker for God must be clothed with humility as with a garment. The Lord will recognize and uh, bless the humble worker who has a teachable spirit. A, re a reverential love for truth and righteousness, wherever such a worker may be. If you are thus, you will show a care of your scholars by making special efforts for their salvation. You will come close to them in loving sympathy, visiting them at their homes, learning their true condition by conversing with them, concerning their experience in the things of God, and you will bear them in the arms of your faith to the throne of their father. And so, one of the things that uh, we find that we can do on Sabbath is visiting with those uh, uh, either who are of our faith or who are not of our faith and uh, just spending time with them and conversing about the things that they experience in their lives and uh, not in, uh, in a secular uh in secular way, but uh, in uh, a sanctity. Uh, in a, um, a sanctity way that is uh, not uh, really bringing the sanctity of uh, the Sabbath into secular issues. And so 
this we are told it needs wisdom, it needs um, our prayers, and it needs a walk with the Lord. And uh, uh, we should make of great interest to know the affairs of uh, our brothers and sisters and neighbors who have not come into the truth. The youths also have to be trained up on how to hold conversations in homes with the people who are not of our faith. And then when they go back at home and the Sabbath is not ended, instead of spending their time in um, regular, uh, 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 regular activities, they can engage their friends, they can engage their family friends in the in the subjects concerning the Bible and uh, life experiences in Christ. We are told also that um, uh, many, uh, in many places, companies of Sabbath keepers may be raised up. Often they will not be large companies, but they must be not neglected. They must not be left to die for want of proper personal effort and training. The work should not be left prematurely. See, that all the intelligent in the truth established in the faith and um, see that all are intelligent in the truth established in the faith and interested in every branch of work before leaving them for another field. And so we can train up on Sabbath, uh, the young men on Sabbath school work so that uh, they may be able to disseminate the same things that uh, they uh, hearing in the book of Second Timothy two two, we are told that and the things you have heard me in the multitude of witnesses, uh, also them commit to able men who can be able to teach others. And so, uh, we are not to come to the Sabbath school and then uh, we have just uh, a routine Sabbaths or uh, we have uh, uh, what we call custom Sabbaths we should uh, make the Sabbath school be a school, the way it is called, a school. You know, we are used in this issue of, uh, we come to the Sabbath and then uh, we have uh, uh, our morning uh, uh, Sabbath school session, then we, 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 we go into classes, then we come back for announcements and then, uh, we wait for the sermon and then lunch. And then in the afternoon, we go to lunch. And after lunch, we come back to Bible discussion, which do not end up being Bible discussions, but uh, Bible debates. Now, this is not how Christ really spent his Sabbath. If we have to go back into the Bible and see what the Bible says. But as we learn how the Sabbath uh, was conducted by Jesus Christ, we are told that on these Sabbath sessions, we can train up the youths on Sabbath school work. And by the way, the Sabbath school work is winning souls to Christ and let them go and practice that. And this is the work they can do and outreach to other people on Sabbath afternoon because it is a life-saving mission. We are not saying that um, evangelistic campaigns should be turned from other days to the Sabbath day. But uh, what we are saying that... Uh, um, it is a work that is permissible because it's a work of saving souls. Uh, and uh, I'll, uh, I'll, uh, I'll read something also from Councils on Sabbath School Work, page 185, paragraph 2. Instruction in regard to conducting Sabbath schools should, to a large degree, be given in the home churches. For the labor can be made more direct and um, the results will be more permanent if instruction is given at home. This work does not require the services of the ministers. They should be free uh, to attend to the spiritual interest of the people. They are to teach others what to do. They must instruct the people as how to come to the Lord and how to lead others to him. And this is what we are talking about. And uh, uh, we can either decide that the Sabbath will be just custom Sabbaths and uh, 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 no more as formal routine Sabbaths, or uh, we shall seek the Lord wisdom in how we can conduct our work better. In Daughters of God, page 119, paragraph 3, this 
Sabbath school afternoons. These experiences prepare their hearts to appreciate and receive instruction regarding the value of missional effort as part of their education. As this subject was presented in the school and in the church during the week of prayer, students and teachers sought to act upon the suggestions and opportunities for labor were found in all directions. Sabbath and Sunday afternoon from 16 to 20 students are engaged in holding prayer meetings, Bible readings, young people's meetings, and preaching services in from six to 10 different places. One result of this work we already see, the workers are greatly blessed. Others, other results may be seen in the future. Also in, uh, in, uh, In Evangelism, page 461, paragraph 4, Bible carried to every man's door. The Bible is unchained. It can be carried to every man's door, and it is truth may be presented to every man's conscience. There are many who, like the noble Bereans, will uh, search the scriptures daily for themselves when the truth is presented to see whether or not these things are so. Christ has said, such the scriptures, for in them ye think ye have eternal life, and they are they which testify of me. Jesus, the world's redeemer, bids men not only to read, but to search the scriptures. This is a great and important work, and it is committed to us, and in doing this, we shall be greatly benefited. For obedience to Christ's command will not be, will not go unrewarded. He will crown with special tokens of his favor, this act of loyalty in following the light revealed in his word, cancels on Sabbath school work. And so you, you find that uh, this door to door work can be done on the Sabbath afternoon. And uh, this is after training the young men and the young women on uh, Bible readings, conversations, and holding what we call social meetings in our Sabbath school so that when they go outside there, they can be able to do an effective work. And uh, this is something that was practiced back in the days of the pioneers and it was successful. And we are sure that uh, when we do such a work, the Lord will attend to it with uh, success. And so it is not just our work to go and uh, uh, sit in the church the whole day and say that we are keeping the Sabbath. This is not how the Lord intended it. We can decide that even the Sabbath, the whole day will be made for song service and prayers. And uh, a very short sermonette or encouragement of 10 minutes. The, 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 there is so much that can be done on the Sabbath that will give praise to God or uh, 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 will not destroy the sanctity of the Sabbath. Social meetings, we don't see them anymore on our Sabbath school. Uh, I know many have talked about it. I have recorded about it also having social meetings on Sabbath. And when we talk about social meetings, it's uh, people giving experiences of their walk with Christ. We are told every church member should be given an opportunity to, to express himself or herself on these matters and how they are finding their spiritual journey uh, progressing. Uh, and this is not with what we find in the Seventh-day Adventist church so much. These things are done in Sunday churches, but we have forgotten. It seems so difficult to bring an Adventist to the point that he can give a testimony of what is happening in his life, his spiritual journey, how the family is doing and the challenges and sharing these experiences so that we may be able to help each other towards this um, journey. In, uh, in the Sabbath also, in a need for Sabbath reform, we also have... Uh, this, we are told, uh, and hallow my Sabbaths, and uh, and hallow my Sabbath, and they shall be a sign between me and you, they, that you may know that I am the Lord your God in Ezekiel 2020. And then the Sabbath should be made so interesting to our families that it is weekly return will be hailed with joy, days of day, day of days, take a walk and uh, teach nature. The Sabbath school and the meeting for worship occupy only a part of the Sabbath. The portion remaining to the family may be made the most sacred and precious season of all the Sabbath hours. You know, as I said, we have this uh, 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 
we have this mind that the Sabbath should be spent in the church, discussing and discussing and discussing. But we have the Sabbath school and the sermon time. But the rest of the time from uh, after the sermon, each family can decide what they will do on their own. And that is what we are being told that um, the Sabbath school and um, what the and the and meeting for worship on, only occupies or uh, occupy only a part of the Sabbath. The portion remaining to the family may be made the most sacred and precious season of all Sabbath hours. And uh, in the minds of children, the very thought of Sabbath should be built, should be should be bound up with the beauty of natural things. Happy the father and mother who can teach their children God's written word with illustration from the open pages of the book of nature, who can gather under the green trees in the fresh, pure air to study the word and sing the praise of the father above. Now, this is a family setup. They have attended the Sabbath school. They have attended the sermon part. And the afternoon, they decide just to go for a walk or uh, under the tree and uh, have a more solemn time as a family, just praising God and teaching about nature. And uh, we continue to be told that uh, uh, in uh, pleasant weather, let parents walk with, uh, with their children in the field and groves. Amid the beautiful things of nature, tell them there is the reason for the institution of the Sabbath. Describe to them God's great work of creation. Tell them that when the earth came from his hand, it was holy and beautiful. Every flower, every shrub, every tree answered the purpose of its creator. Show that it was seen which marred God's perfect work, that uh, thorns and thistles, sorrow and pain and death are all the result of disobedience to God. Bid them see how the earth though mad with the curse of sin, still reveals God's goodness. This is the best op opportunity to uh, uh, have your family and go through this. And uh, if we have qualified medical missionaries, they should work with the, these children if there are uh, places around which they can show them uh, medicinal plants and uh, just talk about God and his creative power. They can do that. If we can cultivate within us a beauty of soul corresponding to the beauty of nature around us, there will be a blending of the divine and human agencies. And this is coming from Faith I Live By, from page 274, paragraph 4 to paragraph 7. As the sun goes down, let the voice of prayer and the hymn of praise mark the close of the sacred hours and invite God's presence through the cares of the week of labor. And so... As we talk about uh, a need for Sabbath reform, we are seeing some of the things we have been omitting to do that uh, uh, we should be doing. Thus, parents can make the Sabbath as it should be the most joyful day of the week. They can lead their children to regard it as a delight, the day of days, the holy of the Lord and honorable body. Just uh, not making them hate the Sabbath. The Sabbath is all about being in church all the day and hearing these disputes and debates about this doctrine and that doctrine. And so in Gospel Workers, 1892 edition, page 383, paragraph 2, we also find something interesting uh, about uh, what can be done on the Sabbath. This is uh, a series on uh, a need for Sabbath uh, reform, and this is part two, where we are looking at what can be allowed to be done on the Sabbath. Who can have so deep a love for the souls of men and women for whom Christ has died as those who are partakers of his grace? Who can represent the truth and the example of Christ better than Christian women who are practicing the truth in their earnest efforts to bring souls to the light? Who are so well adapted to be teachers in Sabbath school with a heart imbued with the love of Christ, teaching the children of her class, praying with them, and for them she may see souls converted. This is women as Christian workers and distributing lit tracts. The true mother is adapted to the teacher of, the, the true mother is adapted to be the teacher of children. I do not recommend that women should become a voter or an office holder, but as a missionary, teaching the truth by 
epistolary correspondence, distributing tracts and soliciting subscribers, subscribers for periodical containing the solemn truth for the time. She may do very much in conversing with families, in praying with the mother and children, she will be a blessing. Women can be instruments of righteousness, rendering holy service to God. It was Mary who first preached a risen savior. And so women can be involved in door-to-door -door distribution of literature on the Sabbath day and reaching to other women and to other children and the families and praying with them. And who is better suited for such a work we are as women are best suited for it. In uh, pastoral ministry, page 279, paragraph three, children's Sabbath school should not replace their attending worship uh, service. The Sabbath school at uh, Dash was made the one great theme of interest with Brother E. It absorbed the minds of the young while other religious duties were neglected. Frequently, after the Sabbath school was closed, the superintendent, a number of teachers, and quite a number of scholars would return home to rest. They felt that their burden for the day was ended and that they had no further duty. When the bell sounded forth for the hour for public service and the people left their homes for the house of worship, they would meet a large portion of the school passing to their homes. And however important the meeting, the interest of a large share of the Sabbath school could not be awakened to take any pleasure in the instruction given by the minister upon important Bible subjects. While many of the children did not attend public service, some that remain were not advantaged by the word spoken, for they felt that it was a wearisome task. Now, it is interesting to note that uh, in the pioneer days that uh, the people could attend the Sabbath school and then go home, those who are living in the vicinity of Battle Creek. And then a bell could again be rung for the hour of the sermon and some would come. But some children were not coming, some pretenders were not coming. And so they were told children missing the sermon hour was not doing something best for them. And so uh, we are even told that the sermon should be made at the interest of the children who are in the congregation. It should not make them think that uh, it is a wearisome task to sit and uh, be able to participate in uh, uh, listening to uh, uh, the what the preacher has to 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 say. And so uh, again, uh, there is uh, this common trend of traveling on the Sabbath because you are looking at what should be done and what should not be done, what is allowed and what cannot be allowed. It is good also to talk about this thing about uh, traveling. Now, if we desire the blessing promised to be, this is a testimony to the church volume six, page 359, paragraph four. If we desire the blessing promised to the obedience, we must uh, do what? We must observe the Sabbath more strictly. I fear that we often travel on this day when it might be avoided. In harmony with the light which the Lord has given in regard to the observance of the Sabbath, we should be more careful about traveling on the boards or cars on this day. In these matters, we should set a right example before our children and youth. In order to reach the churches that need our help and to give them the message that God desires them to hear, it may be necessary for us to travel on the Sabbath. But so far as possible, we should secure our tickets and make all necessary arrangements on some other day. When starting on a journey, we should make every possible effort to plan so as to avoid reaching our destination on the Sabbath. And so sometimes you hear an altar call, an immediate call, immediate call that we need a person who can minister this day on our Sabbath. And the, uh, the information reaches you so late. And so you are forced to travel on Sabbath. We are told that these things, we should be avoiding them. If there is a need to travel, then let it be done prior so that the Sabbath may not be spent in traveling. In 63.60.1, uh, when uh, compelled to travel on the Sabbath, we should try to avoid the company of those who will draw our attention to worldly things. We should keep our minds stayed upon God and commune with him. Whenever there is opportunity, we should speak to others in regard to the truth. We should always be ready to re relieve suffering and to help those in need. In such a cases, God desires that the knowledge and wisdom he has given us should be put to use. But uh, we should not talk 
about matters of business or engage in any common world conversation. At all times and in all places, God requires us to prove our loyalty to him by honoring the Sabbath. In the days of Nehemiah, when the children of Israel had brought upon themselves humiliation and distress by their departure from God in disregarding his law, they sometimes felt that God had forgotten them. The Lord showed his uh, rebellious people that they were depended upon him for prosperity and safety, yet his eye was upon them. They were feeble, exposed to the ravages of uh, their enemies, yet they were the guardians of the worship of the true God and were to preserve a knowledge of his law until the Prince of Peace should come. Nehemiah was God's um, uh, uh, chosen instrument to effect a reformation among his people and to deliver from them the oppression of their enemies. The circumstances were discouraging, but Nehemiah was a man of courage and fidelity. He caused the people to be instructed in the law they had broken. Precept by precept, it was carefully explained that all might fully understand the will of God. One of the principal ways in which the people had departed from God was in discretion of the Sabbath. Heathen merchants who came to Jerusalem to sell their wares lodged outside the gates, and when they were opened in the morning, offered their goods for sale. Many of the Jews traded with them on the Sabbath. These not only broke the Sabbath themselves, but tried to remove the scruples of their own consci conscientious countrymen. Thus, to a great extent, the sacredness of the Sabbath was destroyed. And uh, the reading is long. The Jewish acknowledged their deplorable condition was the result of their transgressions, and in a general assembly, the Levites, as the representatives of the people, confessed God's goodness in his dealings with them, and their gratitude, ingratitude, and sins as a nation, and pleaded before God. And uh, now, therefore, our God, the great, the mighty, and the terrible God, who keepeth covenant and mercy, let not all the troubles seem little before thee that hath come upon us, our kings, our princes, and our priests, and our prophets, and our fathers, and all thy people, since the time of the kings of Assyria unto this day. Howbeit thou art just in all that is brought upon uh, for us. For thou hast done rightly, right, but we have done wickedly. Neither have our kings, our princes, our priests, nor our fathers kept thy law, nor hearkened unto thy commandments and thy testimonies, wherewith thou didst testify against them. For they have not served thee in their kingdom, and in thy great goodness that thou gavest them, and in the large and fat land which thou gavest before them, neither turned they from their wicked works. Behold, we are servants this day, and for the land that thou gavest unto our fathers to eat the fruit thereof and the good thereof, behold, we are servants in it, and yieleth much increase unto the kings whom thou hast set over us because of our sins. Also, they have dominion over our bodies and over our cattle at their pleasure, and we are in great distress. This is the prayer of the people. Having suffered punishment for their sins and acknowledged the justice, of God in his dealings with them, they covenanted to obey his law, and that it might be a sure covenant and preserved in permanent form, it was written out and the priest, Levites and princes sealed unto it. They had a clear knowledge of the claims of God and of the character of sin and with those who had real principle uh, to see and understand was to act. And uh, Nehemiah continued with the, the reformation of the Sabbath, and um, uh, he made sure that no business was really going on on the Sabbath near the gates and the walls of the temple. But um, when you see how the church is moving today, it is steadfastly going back to Egypt, where even the excuses are made that what we are buying is to be used in the house of the Lord. And so people go about, and you know, you are buying it, and somebody is making an interest on it. He has opened his shop, he's doing his work on the Sabbath. He is not a Sabbath uh, uh, keeper. He is a man who doesn't uh, profess any religion and uh, they have opened their shop and we find that even the batteries of the mic that is on the Sabbath that they are bought. We find that some things to do with the Holy Communion on Sabbath, you find people rushing to buy them. 
you find a lot of things being bought and uh, we can go even to the subscription of the internet when the bundles end, you find that we are doing it on Sabbath. Such are things, brothers and sisters, should be avoided on the Sabbath. We have to do Sabbath preparation from Sunday to Friday. Know how much bundles we will need. And I have been guilt on this. I have ever bought, I, I, I had this custom of doing this and I buy bundles. And uh, I really ask the Lord for forgiveness. We should be planning of the Sabbath from um, Sunday to Friday. And the Sabbath should get us ready. This is not a day to start remembering the things that should have been remembering, remembered during the, the, the week. And we are told that uh, forgetfulness is, um, to forget is sin, by the way. The things that should be done, I I'll just go to the quote direct and so that uh, I may not misquote it. Uh, and uh, I hope I get it, forget. Uh, in a moment. I'll be able to give you this quote. Um, this is in 3T, page 12, paragraph 1. Uh, I'll put it on the screen so that we may share together. You know, we are talking about the sanctity of the Sabbath. We have seen what should be done and what should not be done. My husband's mind should not be crowded and overtaxed. It must have rest and he must be left free to write and attend matters which others cannot do. Those engaged in the office could lift from him a great weight of care if they will dedicate themselves to God and feel a deep interest in the work. No selfish feeling should exist among those who labor in the office. It is the work of God in him which they are engaged and they are accountable to him for their motives and the manner in which his branch, this branch of his work is performed. They are required to discipline their minds. Now comes the quote, many feel that no blame should be attached to forgetfulness. This is a great mistake. Forgetfulness is sin. It leads to many blunders and to much disorder and many wrongs. Things that should be done ought not to be forgotten. The mind must be tasked, it must be disciplined until it will remember. And this is a serious thing. And I was talking about merchandise on, on Sabbath. You find that um, we forget that the batteries needs to be there, extra batteries on the Sabbath for microphones. We forget that we have, must uh, refill our bundles on Friday so that when we are presenting, we don't go off. And uh, we forget these things and claim that it is part of the Sabbath when some other people are making profit. They are doing merchandise. And this is uh, what uh, the people are doing in Nehemiah's day. And uh, Nehemiah is recorded as saying that he whipped even some of them uh, so that uh, they will not continue in such a business. But uh, we have lost the sanctity of the Sabbath. We have lost it really. And uh, ask God first to forgive me and then he forgive you for uh, doing some business on Sabbath, which should be avoided and give us the strength not to do this. And so it is as a sin to be heedless, purposeless, and indifferent in any work in which we may engage, but especially in the work of God. Uh, every enterprise connected with his cause should be carried forward with order for thought and honest prayer. We are talking about this issue of doing merchandise, forgetting that uh, uh, we have six days to arrange for what should be done in the Lord's day. Listen, I'll repeat it. It is uh, in uh, Advent Review and Sabbath Herald, talking about this issue of forgetting and forgetting. It is a sin to be heedless, purposeless, and indifferent in any work in which we may engage but uh, especially in the work of God. Every enterprise connected with his cause should be carried forward with order, forethought, and earnest prayer. Faithful standard bearers for God and his truth are wanted, and many are ready to respond to the call. As they see the iniquity and violence that exist in consequence of making void the law of God, they will see the greater reason than ever to reverence that law and will greatly prize its righteous, restraining influences. 
Contempt and reviling increases their love for the precepts of Jehovah. With David, they'll say, it is time for thee, Lord, to work, for they have made void thy law. Therefore, I love thy commandments above gold, here above fine gold. There, there are many people who feel indignant with the things that are going on in the church. What we are supposed to do, we do not do it. And what we are supposed to what we are supposed to do, we do not do it. And what we are supposed not to do, we find ourselves doing. We should not be like the man in Romans chapter 7 who is still in an uh, unconverted condition and struggling with the righteousness and faith. And so uh, I think uh, briefly I have been able to look at uh, what should be done during the Sabbath. That is searching for the lost door to door, um, uh, women distributing literature, families taking their children to the nature walk, medical missionaries using that opportunity to uh, educate people in the medicinal plants and all that stuff. And so uh, I'll, I'll finish up with uh, reading some things, maybe two things. In 6355.3, we are told that on Friday, let all preparation be completed. If there are clothes to be ironed, let them be ironed. If there is cooking, let it be done. If there is blackening of uh, boots, that it should be done. And even taking off the baths should be done. Maybe there are cases which are special that can be excused that, but it should not be necess unnecessarily spent in uh, doing all this stuff. You, you may call it um, uh, legalism, but that's not legalism. It will spare you a lot of things when you just do things for God the way he wants you to do them. And uh, uh, lastly, uh, there is this issue of attending school on Sabbath and having competition and prices on Sabbath. This is where I'm going to end now. What about children attending schools on Sabbath and having competitive uh, um, competitions and prizes on on the Sabbath. Uh, this is um, uh, I'm going to read uh, from uh, councils for the church. Councils for the church, page uh, two hundred and sixty eight point two. Whoever obeys the fourth commandment will find that a separating line is drawn between him and the world. The Sabbath is a test, not a human requirement, but God's test. It is that which will distinguish between those who serve God and those who serve him not. And upon this point will come the last great conflict of the controversy between truth and error. Continued on, some of our people have sent their children to school on Sabbath. They were not compelled to do this, but the school authorities objected to receiving the children unless they should attend six days. In some of these schools, pupils are not only instructed in the usual branches of study, but are taught to do various kinds of work. And here, the children of professed commandment keepers have been sent upon the Sabbath. Some parents have tried to justify their course by quoting the words of Christ that it is lawful to do good on the Sabbath day. But the same reasoning will prove that men may labor on Sabbath because they must earn bread for their children. And there is no limit, no boundary line to show what should and what should not be done. Our brethren cannot expect the approval of God while they place their children where it is impossible for them to obey the fourth commandment. They should endeavor to make some arrangement with the authorities whereby the children shall be excused from attendance at school upon the seventh day. If this fail, then their duty is plain to obey God's requirement at whatever cost. Listen to that. You have no reason for sending your child on any school, whether it be government, whether it be a church school on Sabbath. And we shall be strong on this. And we have to be strong on this. We don't have to esteem the education of these governments more than we esteem the law of God. We are told if the authorities will not accept our request, then we should obey God at all costs. And what that, does that mean? Let the punishment be there on Monday if they go to school, but let them not break. It's like just somebody will tell you, if you don't commit adultery, I'll beat you. So our children are told, if you do not come to school on Sabbath, I'll beat you or I'll expel you from this school. So be it. Let the child be expelled. Let the child be punished. The child will not die. There are people who have suffered worse things than being beaten 
on Monday on school because they didn't attend the school. People have been thrown in lion's den. People have been thrown in fire. People have been uh, dipped in oil, which is so hot. And you can say that my child will be beaten. And uh, worse off, you take your money and take, tell the children, go and pay for that child teacher to teach you on the Sabbath. You know, these children do not just attend this school spring. I, I live near school and many are sent away on Sabbath. And what, why are they being sent away? They are not carrying 20 shillings. That is uh, like, uh, we can say $0.2 to, to school for the teacher to teach them on the Sabbath. He, somebody is teaching you to break the Sabbath and you are paying him to teach you to break the Sabbath. Think about that. And um, I think it is a time that uh, seventh day parents woke up and know that they are going to share in these sins of sending their children on the school on Sabbath. It is a very serious thing and uh, it should be condemned at the highest level. Listen, God who has created you knows what you are going to go through and no temptation has come to man which does not come with the strength to bear it. Kenning won't do anything. In fact, uh, I'm reminded of uh, one of uh, the quotes, education and mark of the beast. Uh, education and the mark of um, the beast, this should be in PH. Uh, education and the formation of the mark of the beast, image of the beast. This is uh, special testimonies on churches, on church schools, special testimonies on church schools, <clears throat> pamphlet uh, 81, page, uh, page uh, 37.2, 37.2. 38.1, and uh, let me bring this on board. Education in the formation of the beast, of the image of the beast. We are looking at uh, a need for Sabbath reform. Education in the formation of the beast and image. The early reformers found it necessary to have their own courses of study, textbooks, Teachers' methods, principles, etc. They separated themselves completely from the popular schools of the day. It required courage and faith in those days to take such a stand, and it will require even more courage and faith for those who are preparing for translation to take the stand which the testimonies are pleading for them to take. They knew that if their children should go to the schools where the popular education was given, they will receive the mark of the papacy or the beast those who are living up to the light at the present time will see even more clearly that if their children continue to go to the popular schools, they will receive such a principles as will compel them to assist in giving life to the image of the beast. Anyone who has a knowledge of the third angel's message and who will take the trouble to examine the studies and methods of the popular system of education can see that the books are filled with those errors which will oblige those who are receiving their education from them to take the dreadful step which will bring upon the world a religious and civil darkness greater than has ever been known before. Now, the command found in Revelation 18 for come out of her, my people, means to come out of those institutions which will place in the minds of our young people principles which are up to make them join the class of worshipers of which we read in 2 Timothy 3, 5 having a form of godliness, but denying the power thereof. As faithful watchmen, we should be just as desirous of getting our children out of the popular schools as we are to call the older people out of the popular churches. The popular churches are only a product of world education. So to get at the root of the matter, we must separate ourselves from that which creates the condition in which all the religious world at present find itself. And look at this. We are talking about the mark of the beast and the seal of God. And the mark of the beast is Sunday sacredness, um, which actually uh, goes against Sabbath worship. And uh, when you allow your children to go in school on Sabbath, what are you trying to do? You are really making them not receive the seal of God. And if they do not receive the seal of God, what are going, they going to receive? They are going to receive the mark of the beast. And so we need a Sabbath reform. 
parents must get strict and serious about this thing. At all costs, we are told to obey the law of God. Competitions on the Sabbath and prizes. This is coming from Councils on Sabbath School Work, page 181 to 182. On Sabbath morning, Marshalltown, Iowa campground, August 1684, a large company made for Sabbath school. Classes were soon arranged, including all except a few who chose seats outside the tent but these were not left to themselves. Teachers were appointed and two or three interesting classes formed. All were as busy as bees and everywhere in the tent and out of it was heard the, the, harm, the harm of voices. The school was well conducted and orderly. And to me, the exercises were very interesting. Um, we are told, by request I spoke about 30 minutes warning them against letting their Sabbath school to degenerate into a mere mechanical routine. We should not seek to imitate Sunday schools nor keep up the interest by offering prizes. The offering of rewards will create rivalry, envy, and jealousy, and some who are the most diligent and worthy will receive little credit. Scholars should not try to see how many verses they can learn and repeat, for this brings too great a strain upon the ambitious child while the rest become discouraged. So there's this issue that all oh, children uh, prepare on the next Sabbath to memorize these verses and these verses, and after that, I'll give you a reward. No, the prophet says this should not be. There are others who are intelligent and are living a Christian life, and they can't memorize those verses. We are really created with different dispositions and capabilities. A person can be a Christian without memorizing 10 verses. And another one, memorizes those 10 verses and gets the prize and they may never be a Christian. And so prizes on Sabbath really conflicts with the Sabbath because the Sabbath puts the rich, the poor, the intelligent and unintelligent on the same level. And what is that level? We are all the children of God. So prizing others because they can memorize this and do this and do that. Brethren, this is not part of Sabbath reform. We should avoid it. We should reform on that line. We are told in, uh, uh, there is, um, we are told in uh, testimonies on Sabbath school work that um, try none of these methods in your Sabbath schools but let pretenders and teachers make every effort to have life and interest in their schools. What a blessing it will be if all will teach as Jesus taught. He did not aim to attract attention by eloquent or by overwhelming grandeur of sentiment. On the contrary, his language was plain and his thoughts were expressed with greatest simplicity, but he spoke with loving earnestness. In your teaching be as near like him as possible. Make your exercises interesting. Let the teachers show that they have thoroughly learned the lesson and are intensely interested in it. Let there be no frivolous or superficial interpretation of the scriptures, but let each be prepared to go to the bottom of the subject presented. And so, uh, brothers and sisters, this is um, where I'm going to reach on this second uh, presentation on Sabbath school reform. My prayer is this. As uh, God works on my soul, he may work on your soul too. That uh, we may come to the Lord as nearly as the angels come to him. In our midst, we have holy angels. In our midst, we have Jesus. In our midst, we have the Father. Let us not just uh, approach God in a casual way. We have six days to do our work. Let us respect God. As Isaiah chapter 58 says that, let us set not our feet on the day of the Lord. And so I know that uh, according to Philippians 1.6, he who has started a good work in you will be able to accomplish it. You can make resolutions even as I'm, I'm now speaking. The resolution won't help. Pray that Jesus Christ fills your heart with his spirit and you will be able to do the things that uh, he did when he was on the earth. We are told that whoever says that he abides in him must walk as he walked. But who on this earth can walk like Jesus? Not one, not one, not one. 
It is only when Jesus Christ enables you to walk like him that will walk with him, with him. not by uh, uh, fasts and prayers and all this stuff. Yes, we have to fast and pray, but don't think that these things them in themselves per se has any virtue. What we want is the spirit of Christ controlling us. We do not want to say what the Lord has said, we will do it. And the next minute we are fallen down. No, let us say by the grace of the Lord, whatever he wills, I surrender. And even I cannot give my own heart. The human heart is so deceitful and desperate. Who can know it, but it is maker. We can only request the Lord to take it and seal it for his courts above. And where there is a willingness and uh, a mind that is uh, focused on these things, the Lord will make it happen. And so may you rejoice in the Lord always. May this Sabbath be a blessing to me and to you and to your family in Jesus' name. Amen. Shall we pray? Father, again, we thank you because the Sabbath was not created to be like a prison for anyone. In fact, the Sabbath is a day of blessing and a day of freedom, finding peace with our maker. And so, Lord, whatever has uh, been a burden to us all through the week, let us lay at thy feet in the feet of thy son that we may get that rest that is in the book of Matthew chapter 11. Thank you so much for allowing us, Lord, to share in this information. And may you forgive me for my past iniquities. Forgive your children for the things they have done in ignorance without knowing, Lord. May we find grace in the sight of our holy God that we serve. And so thank you for accepting us in thy son. For these things we pray in faith. In Jesus' name, amen. And so may the Lord bless you. I'm taking a break for two weeks so that uh, uh, I'm going for a mission and uh, I won't be presenting in the next two weeks. So the whole of next week, the late night presentations, you will be having Brother Zado having family life with the Pastor Ingo Soke. Please don't miss Kenyan time, 7 p.m. from uh, 17th onward. And... Um, if uh, we manage to stream what we shall be sharing in the mission work, we shall stream maybe on Facebook Live or on YouTube Live. But uh, I believe on the days from 17th, we'll be having Brother Zadok and so uh, 17th of March, 2023. So God bless you all until we, we have another late night presentation when we continue in the series of Sabbath, uh, A Need for Sabbath Reform. Otherwise, bye for now and a blessed Sabbath.